Hi, it's Katie Tunstall and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Katie Tunstall. Hi. Hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? <laughs> I'm good. I just want to say welcome back to Toronto. Yeah. We're so excited to have so you. So happy. I love Toronto. Really happy to be back. It's a beautiful day. This alleyway is awesome. It's all really cool. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us in it. Yeah, pleasure. I noticed that you like to use your fair share of emojis on Twitter. Oh, you got to have an emoji. Should, there should sort of be like an emoji training course, really. You know, just the appropriate. And it's quite funny with emojis because as you're going, you learn that emojis don't mean what you think they mean. Which, one have caught, which well, ones have caught you off guard? There's, there's yellow face with like all the teeth. And if the, if the eyes are just holes, it means really stressed out. But if the eyes are smiling, then it means excited. Okay. So if you've been using the one with all the teeth out to try and be excited, everyone thinks you're really stressed. <laughs> just you've so you know. You've been doing it wrong the whole yeah. time. <laughs> well, how and I, I'm sh also sure that the poop can be good. Well, how would you describe one of your tours using only emojis? Whoa. Definitely the explosion. <laughs> Probably the bomb, anticipation, <laughs> always the hands in the air. Okay. Because that's an essential part of a show of mine, is you're gonna have to get your hands in the air. Um, and then what else could we have? Oh, floating guy. You probably don't know about floating guy. I do not. He looks like a kind of ska mod dude and like a, he has like shades and a hat and a suit and tie, but he's levitating and he's like, you can see his shadow on the ground. Okay. You, you'll have to like search through the emojis. <laughs> but I always pogo when I'm dancing and fans are kind of getting into this habit of taking the perfect time photo when of me when I'm like up oh, in the air so and neat. I look like I'm levitating. So I can use levitating guy. <laughs> and then we'd have to finish with fist bump. Okay. Yeah. Just like this. Exactly. <laughs> fist bump and then <laughs> explosion. That's where the explosion emoji comes yes. in. <laughs> you have to have the sequence in order yeah, exactly. perfectly. Well, right before you... You kind of kicked off this entire tour on mm -hmm. your Instagram. You shared a photograph of you laying on a couch, and you're like, this is the last time I'm going to be chilling out <laughs> for a good five weeks. I have packed the bag, living out of a bag yeah. for the next few. So what are your essential items that went into that bag, essential touring items? It's really hard. I mean, imagine you've got to, you've got to go on. You're living on a bus. There's like 10 of you living on the same bus. You can't take your huge bag into the bus. The huge bag has to live under the bus, and then you have to take a smaller satellite bag onto the bus with the things that you need. So I've discovered something incredibly useful for on tour, separate gig clothes bag. Okay. Like if you're really famous and doing really well, and there was a time where I had this myself, when you're on like, when you have trucks on your tour, you have a wardrobe flight case. So all your gig, like, gig clothes live in a, in a wardrobe yeah. that's like movable. Um, and now I have, I have compact bijou gig bag bag, gig bag, clothes bag. bag. <laughs> And um, it's a tiny little one, and it's just full of basically everything glittery and silver and banging that I own, and that's for stage. So that comes on the bus with me. So if I need to get change on the bus, that's all good. The most important thing for me on a tour bus is something that smells really good. Okay. Because the bus doesn't. <laughs> What's the last thing you bought? We have that to live really with good? guys, and I'm telling you, if you've ever if you ever go on a guys tour bus and my tour manager over there can concur. If you go on a guy's tour bus where there's no women, holy S-H-I-T. <laughs> it's YouTube, you can, it's you can like, put the emphasis on it. Okay, holy shit, it's like the <laughs> devil's asshole. <laughs> it's disgusting. One woman, you get one woman on the bus and suddenly the level raises, the bar raises and like guys start using face wipes to clean their face and stuff. <laughs> I mean, they're just, they're just like, could I, could I borrow one of those? And you're like, sure. And they're like, oh, they smell so good. <laughs> so you have to have like nice smelling stuff. Um, that's important. And um, what else is essential on the tour bus? Like I've just bought like this little fryer pod so that we can make food. We all had like cheese toasties this morning. It was That awesome. sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were actually thinking about doing a cooking show because we on have our bus. little air fryer and we it takes like three or four minutes to cook stuff. And we could cook our like cheese toast. You can make everything like steak, you can bake <laughs> cakes in it. We thought like we could do cooking. And then while you're waiting for the air fryer to cook the food, we'd play a song. 
That's an incredible I think idea. It would be an amazing like. I would tune in. Be viral. <laughs> we have to think of a good name for it though. We should discuss that afterwards. Good yeah, names for this. Definitely. <laughs> well, you're now touring in support of your latest record release, Kim. Yeah. Congrats on its release. Thank you so much. How does it feel to have finally shared this labor of love with everybody? It's kind of amazing because it's really surpri- surprising for me that I'm back out with a record because I'd given up. Well, I can't say I'd totally given up. I just thought I was going to take like a five to ten year break. Uh, I was really burnt out after the last record. It had been a very emotional time. My dad had died. My marriage broke up. I'd sold everything I owned in London and I moved to Venice Beach, California. And it was the best thing I ever did. And I had always wanted to get into film scoring and film music. So I was training and learning and scoring and writing songs for movies. Um, And just also loving living in Venice Beach and just having some chill time of just being and just going outside, eating my breakfast with hummingbirds and getting on my bike and drinking like green juice (laughs) and like wearing hemp was really cool. Um, And it was lovely. Uh, But because I'm in LA, I'm driving around a lot, inevitably. And I'm listening to Fleetwood Mac and Tom Petty and Johnny Mitchell and uh, Neil Young. And it's where, you know, in the ro- the Canyon Roads where they wrote all of that music. And I was just really feeling that connection. And about a year after I moved there, I start waking up in the middle of the night with these really big, like, pop rock choruses. I haven't really written stuff like that since the first record. And I'm going, no! <laughs> I want to just live in Venice Beach. I have that itch again. <laughs> and, uh, and it, but you can't really argue with the inspiration. It was coming and I was like, I have to respect it. It's really strong material. So I thought if I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for it 100 miles an hour. And I just and the label didn't know I was making a record. I didn't have management. I didn't really tell anybody. So I just started on GarageBand, making all my demos. And by the time I spoke to my label, I had Tony Hoffer on board, who's done Beck, M83, Fits in the Tantrums, amazing producer. Um, we'd met through my new manager in LA, and uh, my record company guy's eyebrows kind of lifted off his face and went through the roof. He's like, what? What? You made a folk record last time. I was like, I know. So it's a real Californian sunshine kind of rebirth record about coming through difficult stuff in your life and actually ending up in a better place than you were before the hard stuff happened. I'm so happy that you brought up big choruses because Hard Girls has a massive chorus. Yes. It's such a good pop song. Thank so you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. What can you tell me about this Be Yourself anthem? I went to a friend's show uh, in LA and I in no mean, in no way mean to diss the, the crowd. It was beautiful. They looked amazing. It was like a really sexy goth gig. And everybody, I, I was not dressed appropriately. I walked in and looked like I was kind of coming to sell people insurance compared to everyone else who was in there. And they looked amazing and they just had amazing makeup and crazy hairstyles and then layers and layers of like, I don't even know where they buy that stuff. It was amazing. Um, and uh, But they also did all look like they wanted to make out with each other. And it just seemed like... It's funny because oh, I know exactly what you're... Yeah, there's like... <laughs> a lot of stuff to get through before the making out was going to take place. It would be like, I can't feel your lips because their lipstick is so thick. (laughs) And, um, and I just thought this is amazing that people express themselves with outfits and how they look, but also there's an element of hiding behind armor and wanting to look tough, wanting to look cool and tough and, and not be sensitive or vulnerable and and I so hard girls is basically the club that you go to and you don't wear any makeup or any hair gel and you're just yourself and you're stupid and like <laughs> I don't mean stupid I mean you're like goofy, goofy yeah. um, and um, and you can make out with people straight away because there's nothing in the way <laughs> it's a cool club you carried that goofiness and definitely the sexiness with the outfits in the video for the oh, song. Oh, I loved making the videos. Yeah, and it Great. featured Sporty Spice, Melanie C. So Melanie C. <laughs> how is it putting the whole thing together? Because even watching it, not being part of it, but watching it, like I feel like I'm having a fun time. Oh, I'm so glad. It was the probably the funnest video I've ever made. It was a friend of mine who did the video for Invisible Empire 
for the last record, which was basically my Game of Thrones audition of me riding a horse and like fighting people in armor and carrying fire. Um, so we'd already had this, done this like really high octane video before and had a lot of fun. Um, so he came up with the treatment, which is the story. And um, we kind of fiddled around a little bit with the ending because the whole point of the song is about being yourself and it's about friendship and it's about dropping that feeling of competitiveness and comparing yourself to other people. So we thought it'd be really cool if Mel and I ended up a draw at the end and no one actually won and you realise it's not about winning the race, it's just about hanging out, trashing your car and <laughs> looking rad. <laughs> um, and so that's what we did. And. I really like the bit at the end because popping the champagne and spraying the champagne is like so phallic and so male. And if you look at like the Formula One race driver stuff, they're like spraying girls in the face with this stuff. And it's pretty, it's pretty misogynistic, like the whole image of it. And so we thought it'd be really cool that we have the champagne and we pop the corks and we actually just like soak down the podium. And we're not standing on it because we're not interested in having a position. Um, so it was a kind of deliberate statement, a, a somewhat fun, but also a statement at the end of the video. Well, going into making the video and sharing it with everybody, you pretty much asked all of your fans, who do you think is going to be the celebrity yeah. cameo? And you had so like hundreds and hundreds of people yeah. asking. It was saying, amazing. I think it's and there person. was such, and I was just like, oh, if every suggestion could be in one video. <laughs> That'd be quite whoa. the video. <laughs> It was like Susan Sarandon, Juliette Lewis, Linda Hamilton was my favorite. That would have been amazing. Who else did they say? Like Shura, Tegan and Sarah. Um, and a couple of people were saying Mel and I was just ignoring them. <laughs> so I saw a couple really like, cool. I wish, no. So I guess with those, I would yeah. just let those linger. Yeah. And they're like, Hillary? I was like, yeah. She took some time out to be in my video. <laughs> That's important stuff to do. One thing I really like is on your Twitter description, all it says is, come here mostly to swear. And you do swear quite a I bit quite through a your lot. feeds and everything. So what are your favorite curse words? Are we allowed to do that? You are. Cunt. Are we allowed to you do that? You are allowed to do that. <laughs> what did you just say? That was disgusting. I can't believe you just said that. Um, I'm. So, this is also partly why I like Game of Thrones because they use the C word. Because in yeah. Scotland, it's actually quite an endearing word. Yeah, I mean, same I feel, with Australians. I actually feel quite bad saying it in America because people sort of go, <laughs> it's quite, and also because Americans say the T, we don't say the T, yeah. and it's that T is quite, it's quite biting. Um, but um, shite is good. That's quite a good Scottish one, which just means shit, but you put an E on the end and it sounds really like, that's fucking shite. <laughs> it's quite cutting. <laughs> Yeah. So child shows you a painting, you're like, yeah, it's fucking shite. <laughs> I would never say that. I would never say that to a child. I appreciate you sharing those with that. us. I don't have children. You can, you can tell. I always tell children their paintings are good, okay? I'm sorry about that. It was an outburst. <laughs> well, just to wrap things up for all of your awesome fans who'll be viewing, do you have any parting words or anything you want to say? Fuck off. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I'm just Scottish. It's endearing. It's friendly in Scotland. <laughs> um, I would say it's so fun when you can swear and it's not a problem. Do you swear? I do. All the time? On Pretty often. What's your favourite swear word? My favourite swear word? I use shite a lot as well. Really? I do. Props. I'd, I'd probably say fuck. Yeah. yeah. It's a classic. You just, it is. Yeah. So, so versatile. <laughs> um, I would like to say... This record um, has been a real progression for me. I remember when I first started out and had that really big album, I was really hesitant to be the boss of my whole situation. And I just wanted to sing and I just wanted to be in a band. And I found myself shying away a lot from the potential big success that, that lay ahead. And I somewhat kind of pulled back from it at that time. And I've come through such a great period of self-reflection and just kicked the insecurities to, to the curb. They're just not worth the time. And if you're feeling like, if you're feeling that you're not enough or you're feeling that there's something that you can't do, you just tell yourself it's not true. You have to just tell yourself that that stuff is not true and it's not serving you and it's not helpful and get rid because life is short. 
So get rid of that stuff because I've come around to it. And now I'm really grateful and really excited about being the boss, especially as a woman, being in charge and being the architect of what happens in my life. And, um, and it feels amazing. And I just wish if I could go back and speak to my younger self, I would say, girl, it's fucking shite. Come on. <laughs> Don't worry about these things. You're great. You're great. Oh, I just want to say congrats on everything and thank, thank you. you for the non-shite interview. This was so much fun. Like, I really appreciate your time. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite artists. And just be nice to children and teach them when it's appropriate to swear. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.